Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you a quick tip that can make your code cleaner. It really depends here. It's a matter of, of test in this video. So you can see the code here, go to previous. What does it do? It's basically a function that I saw in a pattern that I saw in a few applications where people use a loading status to actually show beautiful things on the screen and then transition to another page or another view, basically. So they use a set loading through here and then they use like a timer, like a, a set timeout. And then in the set timeout, they will turn the, the flag to false and then do the navigation uh, uh, right here. Okay, so there is actually a different way of writing it that makes the code a little bit easier to see. Let's first see how this thing works. We have it here, we can see it here. Basically it says loading status state and then true, then false, okay? So now, the way you could clean that up is to move the set loading right there at the bottom. We're going to comment out to this port and then we're going to create a function called delay. That function will take a period, which is basically a number, and then right here it will return a new promise. And that promise there will have a resolve a function. A promise actually takes a, a, a callback that takes two parameters. Here we're only going to make use of the resolve one. And the resolve one we use it with a set timeout. Inside the set timeout, we're going to pass the resolve and the period. Right? So once we have that, we could then easily come here and say, we're going to call the delay function, pass a, the period we want. In our case, it was two, 200, uh, 2000 milliseconds. However, this won't work unless we use an async await over here. Okay, so this will give you exactly the same result, but with a more uh, procedural approach where you see things happening one after the other. So set loading to true, and then you know that it's going to wait for t t two, two seconds, and then it set the loading back to false. So if we look at it right here, we can see that it does exactly uh, the same thing. Here is the, the, the main thing here is you could now export that and then use that everywhere where you need to delay operation or and so on and so forth. However, if you use things like reactive programming, uh, RxJS and so on and so forth, you probably don't need that delay because you have built-in functions that allow you to artificially delay operation or simply, uh, you know, just uh, put a, a number where that you want your API to be recalled X amount of time after a certain time. So all of that is built in in like this kind of reactive programming um, libraries. So I hope this was uh, clear and uh, I will see you in another video. Cheers.